Hey guys, it's your girl Boonie, and you're listening to episode 177 of the Boonie Breakdown Podcast, your source for all things responsible and ratchet. Support for today's episode comes from Erin Condren, a lifestyle brand known for creating fun and functional organization essentials for the home, office, and everything in between. Get you some quality planners and high quality notebooks to custom organizers, desk accessories, and so much more. And as a Boonie Breakdown listener, you can receive $10 off your first purchase of $40 or more by using the code RAKU10. One zero. That's R A K U T E N one zero. Details on how to purchase can be found in the show notes and on the booniebreakdown.com. All right. Welcome to this week's episode, guys. Uh, it is a solo episode with your girl. I don't think we've done a solo episode this season in season nine. So I figured we need to get this going before the season wraps up. So you get some quality time with your girl, Booney. Um, We're going to switch things up. It's not going to be the normal flow of a normal episode uh, because I am going to do my lovely five spot episodes, five random thoughts, some funny. (laughs) <laughs> Some might be ridiculous this time, <laughs> but we'll see what comes the fuck out my mouth as we record. First up, let's get into some feedback from last week's episode with Brian Black Waxed and Vaxed uh, with Brian. So many of you <laughs> from uh, Talk to Booney Tuesday, I had asked uh, Brian the same question that I had asked Sheikha in the episode prior Was he sharing his vaccination status uh, publicly and was he requiring that of his um, people he's dating this upcoming season? And he was like, you know, kind of the same, like not really, but you can be. So I asked on Talk to Booney Tuesday, um, the audience, and 68% of you said you were not publicly sharing your vaccination status. So I think that's interesting as we... As the government is forcing us to accept the COVID is over, even though I'm not sure the COVID is over. Um, yeah, that's interesting to see. Also, it was a lot of feedback about people seeing Brian's growth, but now that he's in therapy. So I asked that question on Talk to Booney Tuesday. 65% of you guys said you did not see growth. He needed more time in therapy. Now, I would agree. He needs more time. But I will say that I have seen some growth in my friend. And I am proud of him for seeing it through and sticking with therapy. So if you have not listened to last week's episode, I encourage you to go back, check it out. It is great. A nice, fun laugh. You know, when Brian is on, we have a good ratchet time. So check it out if you have not done so. All right. Last bit of housekeeping before we move into the five spot. Just want to let you know there are only six episodes left in season nine of the Boonie Breakdown. I know the season went really quickly. (laughs) It snuck up on me. I was not... I was looking at my calendar like, whoa, after this episode, there are only six episodes left. I don't have a a launch date for season 10 yet, but you guys know as soon as I know, I'll let you know. But can you fucking believe it? We're going into season 10 of this shit. So thank you guys for rocking with me. (laughs) As soon as I get the date, I will let you guys know so we can start promoting and marking our calendars for season 10. All right, let's get into the five spot. Number one, if you follow me on Instagram, which you all should be doing at this point, if you listen to the Boonie Breakdown, follow us at the Boonie Breakdown over on Instagram. In the Insta stories, uh, maybe last weekend or two weekends ago, I was sharing uh, some scenes from a show that I was watching. A gazillion of you DM me and it was, (laughs) I had to respond to all of you. What show is this? Michael Chi is that damn Michael Chi on HBO Max. That shit is fucking hilarious. Um, It is uh, six episodes or seven, six or seven episodes. They're only like 20 to 30 minutes, but they're fucking hilarious. It reminds you um, maybe of, if you to compare it to something, it reminds you of a Dave Chappelle-esque type situation. Uh, But the... The uh, commentary is amazing. They He goes there about police brutality. He goes there about the Illuminati and blood sacrifices and how to get put on in Hollywood. You got to do gay shit. His words. Um, 
There is even an episode about, um, you know, the satire around COVID, the vaccine, wearing a mask. The shit was laugh out loud funny from the very first scene. If you are someone who can't take jokes, maybe you might not want to watch it. Um, but the shit was hilarious to me. And so I was sharing it. I mean, there was even a scene with full frontal nudity. Uh, not the kind that'll turn you on. <laughs> But the show was actually really funny. And so I hope it gets picked up and it comes back because I fucking enjoyed every single minute of it. So if you have checked it out, please be sure to let me know in the DMs. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about the show. Um, but check it out. I enjoyed it. Now, I don't. I did watch his one stand up he had on Netflix. And that was decent, too. Like, I don't think he is not a funny guy. Um, but yeah, check it out. It it really was Chappelle show esque. I think that's the closest thing that I can um, peg that with. So yeah, like I said, let me know in the DMs if you watched it and enjoyed. All right, number two, your girl did a thing. If you uh, have been ignoring anything that I've been saying. <laughs> Uh, we have launched a YouTube channel. So if you've been living under a rock, I think I've been um, teasing that it was coming. Also trying to get my subscribers up because there's a, uh, you know, a thing there um, in order for you to get the personalized uh, URL or vanity URL, you had to have a certain amount of subscribers. So thank you all of you who followed me blindly. Okay, if you're over on YouTube, I have all of the episodes of the podcast already go there. So... Um, yeah, I know some people who couldn't bring their cell phones into work or certain things are blocked at work. They can't sit on their headphones, but they can play YouTube at work. So the podcast is on YouTube. What is new now? Cause some people were like, what you already on YouTube? What is new? There will be actual videos. You will see my face. So it launched on May 15th, uh, this past Saturday. If you have not watched head on over there, I have two videos up. Um, I'm not committing to a video content schedule just yet, but know that videos will pop in and out. Um, it's going to be some fun shit um, because I am trying to monetize that channel at some point. Uh, it probably won't be as ratchet of a flair um, as you can expect from the podcast. It'll be sprinkles of ratchet, um, but it will be fun nonetheless. So I promise you that it will be fun and engaging content, um, not just a money grab for me. Um, I don't like putting my name on things that um, that you guys won't enjoy because we're building a brand here. So it has to be on brand and it has to look good. And so I want to shout out two people who helped me get the YouTube channel going. Um, my brother, Shout out to Cheech. He was in an episode of the podcast. And if you've been to any of the live shows in Philly or in Baltimore, uh, you've seen my brother because he's the one who usually is filming. So my brother helped edit and uh, shoot some those videos and some future videos. And I want to shout out Mike Nice uh, down in ATL. So if you were at the ATL live show, he was the guy who was filming in Atlanta. And so he did a nice little video entry, little bumper for my videos. Everything we do over here is professional. Nothing's going to be wag. Nothing's going to be lackluster. <laughs> Everything's going to be branded and consistent. And so shout out to Mike and Cheech for helping me get the YouTube channel out. Over there, I expect comments. I will respond. I like it. Uh, subscribe. Comment on the videos. Um, that's all I ask of you. That would be dope. And I appreciate you guys supporting me in another avenue. There will be different like segments over there. So just, I'm just really excited to play around with video and, and get, I mean, comfortable behind the microphone where you can't see me, but to get comfortable in front of video is a different, it's a different beast. And so I'm excited to grow there and see all the great things that come out of that platform. Cause when I hear little nine year olds, is making millions of dollars reviewing toys on YouTube. Yeah, I need to get a piece of the pie. <laughs> Speaking of pieces of the pie, uh, shout out to our Patreon gang. This is number three. If you have not joined over on Patreon, uh, you can do so. We have a live event coming up. We do first Thursdays live with Booney. So that live event will be what that's june 3rd yeah so june 3rd will be our next uh boonie live event and then i think july 1st i might change that because it's a holiday weekend i'll have to poll the patreon crew 
but we have a good time over there. Depending on the content of the live event, it is recorded. You can go back and watch the replay. The Patreon gang gets extra would you rather questions. The Patreon gang has a group chat with me and other patrons, um, supporters of the podcast. So I just want to thank you guys because not doing live shows is, was the biggest source of income for the podcast with COVID. And so Patreon has helped cover a lot of the bills of the podcast. So I just want to thank my responsible as fuck my responsible and ratchet and my ratchet as fuck patreon gangs uh ratchet as fuck patreon gang is the highest tier um the first crew of those have been consistently paying for the for for four months now and so every four months they get a piece of custom merch that is not available for sale and will not be for sale maybe at a future date for it'll be to sale for to other patreon members at cost uh but Shout out to my Ratchet as Fuck gang. You guys should have gotten all of your custom merch this past weekend. All right. <laughs> Number four. This is going to be a short episode, guys. We'll see. Because my last my last one, I might go into like a super duper rant. I'm not sure. Just shout. Number four. Whoever created the fresh serving size packs of Ritz crackers, graham crackers, and saltine crackers deserves a fucking raise because <laughs> don't you hate when you pull a sleeve of, of saltines out of the box and then you only eaten eight of them and now the 29 crackers are going to go stale. So these little fresh packs, they are like short stacks of like graham crackers. So like I'm eating one right now. And it had like eight little, eight squares. So it's probably like three whole graham crackers broken down into half and packaged. But it's perfect because it's the perfect snack. And I know the rest of the graham crackers won't fucking go stale. So kudos to the person who decided to (laughs) create and brand that. Uh, You deserve a raise. And I wish that I could give you a raise. But what I'll do, um, what I do is... I, I I can can keep supporting and buying, <laughs> but that shit is genius. And don't DM me and saying, Boonie, these been out for like four years. I don't have children. I, I try to grocery shop the best I can, but you know, sometimes I don't, I can go like a month or two without grocery shopping. <laughs> so when I just went to the grocery store and saw those, like they were, they were new to me, they were new to me and thus they earned a spot on my five spot for the week. All right. You know what? We might do six spot because I had just had another thought. All right. So we're going to, yeah. I got a a listener question asking me in my DMs what I thought about the whole Joe Budden podcast situation. Here's the thing. <laughs> I don't listen. I listen to podcasts. Let's make that clear. But a lot of popular podcasts I try not to listen to as often or in regular time because I don't want osmosis me to pick up what they're doing. I want to be very clear and I'm doing my own thing and I don't want to be influenced by other things. Also, so I'm not saying that the Joe Budden podcast listening to it would change how everything I do. Joe Budden podcast is just too fucking long. I'm not committing three hours of my life listening to that. (laughs) So I don't listen to his podcast. Um, I've listened in episodes where it might have got popping on Twitter. And so I'm like, oh, let me go listen to the part that they were talking about on Twitter. That's probably the type of actor. I mean, active listener. I am not of the podcast. So when the question came to me, I thought about a situation that I, I had encountered. So someone had reached out to me. Maybe it was sometime during the pandemic. So within this last year, somebody had reached out to me and thought I would be a great co-host for their their podcast. So they asked me to be a co-host for a new podcast. So I responded back, you know, tell me more. They told me more. It sounded dope. So I said, okay, great. If I commit to this, I can only commit in the capacity that I'm just going to show up and record for this podcast. I'm literally everything. I reach out, I schedule guests, I record, I edit, I make the clips on social media, I send follow up with the guests. Like I do all of that. So I don't have the capacity to do that for another podcast 
But what I can do is show up and record. And that's it. That's all you're going to get. And I'll, I'll share it, you know, like on social. <laughs> they said, okay, that's fine. So I said, well, I can have my attorney, because y'all know, y'all know my attorney. She's been on the pod too. I, I can have my attorney draft an agreement um, that could possibly be a 70-30 split because my time and my knowledge and my voice is worth money. So we can do a 70-30 split and you could take the 70 since you're booking, you're going to create, you're putting up the upfront money, you're doing all that. I'll take 30. They responded back to me. It's not that serious. We don't need that. Well, those are my terms. In order for me to do this, I need this agreement because intellectual property matters. Um, My, my attorney would be so proud. I don't even think I even told her this. Um, And so <laughs> they wrote back, well, yeah, we don't think it's that serious. Like we just want to record. And I'm like, I agree. I did this with a podcast where I just got the microphone on Amazon, started recording, started throwing shit out there and had to do the work on the back end to make sure I'm protecting my interest in what I'm growing and what I'm building. So, you know, thanks for the offer, but I'm going to have to decline if we can't get a written agreement. So I say all that to say my thoughts on this Joe Budden shit. Um, yes, he is the name of the podcast, but these two supporting characters, um, were also on the podcast weekly and they have helped that brand grow. And so I don't know all the ins and outs of what he said. And I know Rory and Mal just put out an episode, um, trying to tell their truth. So I will just say all this, like somewhat, you know, I don't fucking really like Joe Budden. <laughs> So it doesn't make any skin off my back. Um, But I feel like he's wrong from what I've been able to piece together. And I don't think what they're asking for to see accounting and to see books and to like, if we have a contract, why can't I see these things? These things should be very clear. Um, And so that shit, like I understand business is business and friendship is friendship. And I know it hurts even more when your friends kind of do you dirty in your eyes. Um, but you know, the way it reads to me, you know, I'm kind of team Rory and Mal, like show us the numbers. Like if it's nothing to hide and the contracts are, 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 you know, can be withstanding and you say you're right, then then show me the fucking money. Like show me the black and white and we can squash this and keep it pushing. And then when time comes, we can renegotiate a contract and get some more money or whatever their quest is. So I will watch Rory and Mal because I'm, I'm curious to hear, um their side of it I'll I'll listen to it eventually it's not high on my priority list but those are my thoughts on that situation and so I say all that um for people who are out here and thinking this is a game and I'm just doing this on the side yes but what you're building has value and so protect it as much as you can I would love to get to the like right now I'm so grateful that I have friends who do this shit on the humble for me uh Shika Brian, Kenny, they don't ask me for shit, right? So of course I try to throw them bones. All right, Sheikha, <laughs> you know, I'm not in a spot where, like I'm not making a lot of money off this, right? I would love to get to the spot where I can pay my people. That's the dream, right? That I can be like, here is a stipend for you helping me to grow this. Right now, it's me buying Brian a fancy bottle of scotch or whiskey or some shit like as an appreciative gift. Okay. She could, here is a sex toy. Like <laughs> that's what we get. And uh, they show up for me all the time and I would never do them dirty, but trust and believe if I got to the point where somebody's writing me a check, Oh, I'm, I'm breaking the people off who have been there with me day one. Like my very first episode was Brian. My second episode was Chrissy and Sheika. Like I and Kenny. Like he don't want to really do this shit, but he do it because I ask him. <laughs> but best believe if a check get broke off over here for some money, I'm taking care of my people. And it will at that point we won't have to sign some official agreements, right? And so you know I empathize with Roy and all. Um, hopefully they can go on to be successful and and do it, but. If you are trying to out here to grow something, it is worth every penny to have some type of legality, some contracts set up to support you so you don't get fucked over. And especially when a friendship is involved. So everybody can agree on the terms. 
and um, we're clear up front. So it's almost the same concept of the prenup. Let's decide what happens when this relationship dissolves while we're happy. So when the shit falls apart, while we were happy, this is what we said, right? <laughs> so I'm kind of, uh, you know, it just prote- it's, it's so many ways you can protect yourself so you won't be in these situations, hopefully. And, and um, I hope you take advantage of it. So that's my thoughts on that whole shit. Um, I am going to listen to Rory and Mile. I think someone put it up on YouTube for free because I wasn't paying them any money. So, <laughs> All right, so since I said we're going to do six, um number six in the five spot i don't know how that works but this is my own shit i make the rules so number six um it's teeth i don't really understand wait a minute let's back up teeth are a very important central part of your face they make a very they make or break the first impression i was someone i didn't always have pretty teeth or nice teeth. My teeth were pretty, I'm not going to say fucked up, but my teeth on my bottom were not the straightest. Um, the top, I had a small gap. And as soon as I had wanted to get braces, um, I had gone to, this is as an adult, um, gone to the dentist. I had some other dental issues, had to get a crown, had to get the wisdom teeth out. I had to do some things first before I could do Invisalign. Then I invested in myself did Invisalign and it was the best thing I could have done. Um, uh, it pains me. I mean, it, it truly pains me when I see people who designer down, open their mouth and smile. And it looked like a goddamn grenade went off like sis brother. You are holding a fucking Dior bag that could have got your teeth fixed. (laughs) <laughs> you start on a gram with a Birkin, but you got a tooth every four centimeters. What the fuck? It blows my mind. Your teeth are so important, people. We can't be out here yuck mouth, but I'm in Dior. What kind of shit is that? I really, <laughs> I can't take it no more. I try to be peaceful. <laughs> I try not to talk shit. But the ingesting all that I do on the gram and I try to get off of it. My friends know this. I say it to my friends all the time. Social media has ruined all of us. Even though those of us who try, um, who may not have go to the extremes of social media influence. But social media has ruined all of us to some degree. And it, I don't think we'll ever recover from it as a society. One. But to me, I'm sitting here. I'm always the person like, well, damn, how these motherfuckers afford all this shit? How you got Birkins and Dior's and Tesla's and flying private and doing all this? And I'm like, damn, I, uh, tell me, because I might be willing to do some of what y'all doing to get the same things. But it really, really bothers me. You sitting here in a Mercedes S500. It might be rented. It may not be. I don't know. But a Mercedes S500 with a Rolex on, with the Dior book tote bag on the seat next to you, flossing all of that on the gram, your Cartier love bracelet, and then you turn around and post up your fucking pointless video of you singing into the camera, twirling your hair while you're driving your Mercedes S500, and your teeth look like shit. I do not understand. Make it make sense. In the words of my infamous Baltimore sister, Monique, make it make sense. I really just, I, it, it, it makes no sense to me. How? All this design and shit, you can't get one tooth fixed? You can't get the mouth fixed, the grill piece? I mean, am I alone? <laughs> Y'all don't be thinking this. I haven't had a boonie rant in a long time, but I really am tired. You done flown to Columbia, risked your life to get an ass and lipo and titties, but you ain't go to Dr. Mario and get no new teeth? We can do Smile Direct Club without going to the fucking orthodontist. There are people on Instagram who sell braces. I don't recommend going to them, but there are so many ways that you can attempt to fix it. But y'all don't. I'm going to post the before and after of my teeth. 
I have no problem. I did it before. I'll show where I come, where, where I came from. <laughs> I have no problem doing that. But the cost of my Invisalign is also was the cost of this Christian Dior book. So I keep saying that because it's the bag I want, but I just can't pull the trigger on it because I got other priorities because I can't afford to do that. I'm honest with y'all. I can afford to live a pretty cool a life better than most people. Right. When you think of in the totality of the world, I live a really good life. But I can never bring myself. I struggle with, you know, pulling the trigger on things like that when I'm like, shit, I could do this. But apparently y'all motherfuckers over here got money for everything because y'all doing it all for the gram. Fix the motherfucking teeth. I'm tired of seeing it. So that is it for my boonie rant (laughs) today. Uh, Be sure to support our sponsor at Aaron Condren. You can use the code RAKU1010. That's R-A-Q-U-T-E-N-1-0. The link is in the show notes and on the booniebreakdown.com to buy your Aaron Condren lifestyle purchases. Uh, thank you guys for supporting our sponsors that too also help funds <laughs> the bills here at the Boonie Breakdown podcast. All right. So thank you for this solo episode. Again, there are only six episodes left in the season and we're done and heading into season 10. So if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to listen and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or any app that you listen to your favorites on. Don't forget to leave a review too. You might just hear your review on the next episode. Follow us on all social media. We're at The Boonie Breakdown on Facebook and Instagram, at Boonie Breakdown on Twitter. Share this episode with those you love. Use the hashtag pod in P-O-D-I-N and the hashtag The Boonie Breakdown. Uh, share the images with everyone. I don't make them for nothing. Have a dope ass week. Stay healthy, safe, and sane. Thank you for listening. And remember, the ratchet in me always honors the ratchet in you. Ho, my stay. Until next time. <laughs>